you so sweaty, bro. Am I still sweaty? I see it in your shirt. Oh my gosh, really? <laughs> oh, I see it. <sighs> Should I just do this? <laughs> I don't think anyone will know this. Anymore. Probably not. Okay. One of the questions I get asked a lot, and one that's come up a lot recently from some of our followers, has been about swelling at the finger joints. So we have two of these main finger joints, the DIP and the PIP, so that stands for distal interphalangeal and proximal interphalangeal joint. So these two joints can get a lot of strain and stress from climbing. So what we want to do is talk about what are the most common diagnoses, what are the most common causes of that swelling, and what we can do about it. One of the most common causes, and this is what I see the most, is a synovitis of the joint, and that's usually at that proximal joint, that PIP. So uh, that synovitis is caused by irritation to the joint, and we'll talk about that in a second. The other most common can be from a collateral ligament sprain, so that's gonna be those ligaments on either side of the joint, or it can be related to a volar plate injury. So that's more likely like a trauma. So if you like hit really hard on your finger and you had like a hyperextension or hyperflexion moment, that can cause a volar plate injury. Um, and then the third thing that we'll, we'll see that kind of swelling around the joint, it may not actually be swelling, it may actually be a bony growth. Because if you've been climbing for a very long time, those muscles as they pull on the bone, they can pull that bone and make it a little bit wider and make that finger a little bit fatter. So let's talk about the synovitis because that's the main thing in how we get a lot of that swelling. So when we go through a crimp position, we create a lot of stress on the joint. So normally, you know, our joint, the load is pretty equal, but when we go through a crimp, we create a lot of pressure on one side of that joint. That constant pressure and that irritation can start to break down the tissue in that area and cause inflammation of that synovial membrane, so that can cause synovitis. Once that process starts, it can actually start to become pain-free because you either get used to it and you just keep climbing, or you know, possibly you're damaging some of the nerve endings that are responsible to tell you, hey, I should stop doing this. Once that process gets going and you have more and more inflammation, it's really hard to stop it. So the number one thing you can do to prevent synovitis is prevention. It's going to be to pay attention to the symptoms, not crimping too much too early, and taking appropriate breaks when you need to. So if you do that, you can try and prevent that injury. Now, what if you already have this and you're trying to treat it? You know, there's not like a ton of miracle things that you can do out there, but there are a few good things you can do. So one thing, for example, is gonna be, you need to take rest and go through a lot of light movements with fingers. That can be with putty, that can just be with tendon gliding. Any kind of motion that you get that's gonna move fluid out of that joint is gonna be beneficial. One of the other things that you can do are light joint mobilizations on yourself. So to get that going, it's basically like if you think about pulling your finger, but if you do that, most of that separation is going to come from the knuckle, which is not where you're having that problem. So you need to put that finger, the knuckle, in full flexion, so that way that's going to be locked off. And then if you're working on the proximal interphalangeal joint, you need about 10 degrees of flexion. So 10 degrees of flexion is not very much. So we come through here and we just get a light bit of pull. Now you can hold that briefly or just do little oscillations at that finger joint. Now, if you want that distal interphalangeal joint, you need about 30 degrees of flexion, so a little bit more, and you want this proximal joint in full extension, because that's that closed pack position there. Closed pack meaning you're gonna get less movement from the joint. So full flexion here, full extension here, 30 degrees at this joint, and then again, I'm pulling straight out in a way to create some of that distance which is gonna open that joint space up and allow for more fluid exchange. If you had more trauma and it's more of a collateral ligament injury or a volar plate injury, please go see a specialist or a professional in your area because proper accurate diagnosis is super important to actually be able to treat the injury correctly and safely. <laughs> okay, we ready? All right, so this is Coban tape. So this is very elastic. You get... <laughs> All right. All right, so this is Coban tape. So this is very elastic. It'll adhere to itself really well when you wrap it around whatever you're going to wrap it around. That sounds stupid. 
<laughs> I was like, that was bad. <laughs> okay. We'll go back to that again. All right, so this is Coban tape. It's very elastic, and it'll adhere to itself really well. So we're going to start by going on the distal end of our finger. So we start that initial wrap just right across, and then it'll lay across itself, and it'll adhere nicely. Then we're going to start wrapping, again, from that distal end to the proximal end, so going towards the heart. And we're going to do a little X pattern. So we go down first, and we come back up. This is going to create a good layering of the, the tape that's also going to allow you to keep motion. If you just went straight down the finger and continued in that pattern, you're not going to have as good a motion. The tape won't be able to move on itself as well, and instead it'll start to bunch up, and it won't give you that all like, long-lasting tape that you can use. So we go up and down as we go through this. Now, again, we don't want to go super tight with this because you're going to get too much compression. You're going to actually block arterial blood flow, and then you're not getting any circulation of that finger, which is going to cause more problems than you're solving. So a little bit of light compression, down and back up until we get the entire finger covered, and then we can finish the tape here. Now, all you need to do at that point is just give it a nice little squeeze, and it'll adhere to itself. And then we can get full motion from this, and the tape will go back every time you go through this. It won't bind up. It'll stay in good place, and it'll give you that good compression. So one thing you can do then to test that is you can squeeze the end of your finger and look for that capillary refill. So it should go from white to pink or red again. Um, and you can test for color or anything else. If you feel pain, that's obviously not good. You did it way too tight. Don't use this at night when you're sleeping because if you did it too tightly, you may not know and you're going to wake up with a lot of pain in your finger because you are cutting off your circulation. This can help with that synovitis, it can help with some of that swelling, and it can help especially if you're dealing with injuries to the finger and you're getting more swelling that you want to control. Again, if you have swelling at that joint and it's from trauma, please see a specialist so you can get proper treatment. If you think it's from synovitis, you can do some light joint mobs. You need to rest, you need to go through good range of motion, and you can apply some taping for compression. So I hope you found this video useful. If you have any further questions on it, please let me know, and we can dive a little bit deeper into those questions. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Whoa, bro. Do you see how good that was, though? It was, like, right by it. We need to understand what are the, some, that was started off so good too. What are the common things that we can do to treat it? Man, I'm blowing it. I, I wanted to do common diagnoses and then causes. Should I just restart, restart? Yeah, might as well. You're, right. you're cruising on the last one. So we have two of these main, wow, I really don't like it. And that causes a response and that synovial, it's good, it's great. That was a lot. I feel like I was all over the place. Cutting off all that blood flow. That's not what we want. Just a light a bit of compression. Just a light a bit of compression. <laughs>